Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Valpo Basketball Weekly, along with the head coach, Matt Loddick. I'm Todd Eichow. And now we've got to start with what's, what's the main story right now around Valpo basketball, what people are talking about, and, and that is the injury situation and, and where things stand. I'll uh, sort of uh, expand on that, where things stand with each player who is out right now. Well, um, you know, it's, you know, the one thing as a coach, you know, you try to prepare and, um, you know, injuries, you know, you just really can't prepare for injuries. And so, um, you know, we'll speak on Derek, um, you know, and I've never been seven foot two. Um, mm -hmm. And I also um, understand that, you know, backs and especially at that height and that weight, and, you know, can be a little bit sensitive. So um, we do anticipate him playing, um, but um, again, uh, we just hope there's no setbacks with that. Um, you know, Marcus Golder, um, you know, I don't think he's going to play um, coming up, but uh, hopefully we uh, can get him back soon. And then Ryan Fizikas is progressing nicely. Okay. Are you going to a week where you think, all right, we know there's a good chance Ryan Fizikas isn't going to play in either game, but then you end up going into a game where you didn't even know that Derek Smith wasn't going to play until right. right before tip. In fact, I, I talked to... Coach, coaching staff members maybe about a half hour before the game. I said, well, Derek hasn't come out yet. And they said, well, he's, he's in the locker room. He's stretching out. He's hoping he, he yeah. feels better and, and, and is ready to go. So that makes it really difficult because you didn't find out right before tip, and then you've got to change what you planned on doing, right? Well, no doubt about it. I mean, and then you look at it, just, just the statistics of it. And, you know, we've got guys and plenty of guys that can do a lot of things. Um, but, you know, those specific guys, I man, I don't – know the exact numbers it's probably around 36 points a game that they were averaging and you know our team's gotten a little accustomed to playing uh, without Ryan but you know having Marcus out of the lineup and then Derek I mean two guys that we're relying on to, to score points for us um, you know it just puts us in a little bit of a predicament because again we have guys playing positions that they haven't made, played um, taking on new roles and um, you know hopefully with a couple of days of practice we can we can do better at it. Yeah and you ended up playing four guards a lot yep. and, I, and I think that looks like maybe going ahead for maybe the next week or so, that it's going to be sort of similar. You're going to have to play four guards quite a bit. And then the guys have to step up. And at least on a positive note, the one guy who clearly is getting better with each game is Daniel Sackey, and that's exciting to see. No, it is. And, you know, Daniel's approach to, to the game is just something that, um, you know, we really like around here. And, you know, he's competitive. Um, he brings a lot of just positive spirit to the team. And, um, you know, the one thing that, you know, obviously, Drake, I think I thought we just ran out of gas towards the end. I mean, it just it just got tough with, uh, you know, we had seven scholarship guys. And, um, but, you know, they kept fighting. I was proud of how hard they played. I was proud of um, how they really laid it all the line, on the line. And I thought Daniel was a big part of that. You, you go in thinking, all right, we've got to find ways to get enough points. Yeah. And, and does that lead you? I'm just I don't know. Does that lead you to, ha are we going to have to run specific plays to try to get people open? It, it, you know, when Ryan Fazekas is out there, when Marcus Golder's out there, they're going to, you know, they're going to make some shots. Right. And they can space the floor. How does that change from an offensive philosophy now when you know we don't have those guys and, and we have to find, <laughs> figure out ways to score baskets? I mean, it gets more difficult, especially, you know, we're, we're not quite in the second half of conference yet, but we're getting close. And, you know, you get to this point, you know, there's not a lot of surprises. You know, most teams know exactly what each other are doing. And, and so for the most part, it comes down to shot making. And, you know, our job, we got to get guys good looks. Um, and, um, you know, at some point we got to jump up and make some shots. And, and so, uh, you know, hopefully we get some guys in some uh, different roles that maybe, you know, in certain spots where, you know, Marcus or Ryan were out there space. And um, now it's going to have to be some different bodies and we have to jump up and make shots. Yeah, and with sacking it and – Freeman playing big, big minutes, almost like that. If we can get a few transition baskets, because that's that's really their strength, their speed, their ability mm -hmm. to get all the way to the basket. You've got to find a way maybe to get quick attacks, where in the past you could still set up in the half court, dump it down to Derek, get kick outs. It, some of that has to change, I guess, but you can't just force fast breaks when they're not there. Yeah, well, you also got to get stops to get on, get on yeah. the break. So, uh, again, you know, we're going to continue just to do what we do. Um, and... You know, we're going to make adjustments when we can make adjustments, but honestly, wholesale changes at this point is is probably going to be more of a detriment than it would be a benefit. You know, um, and you know, hopefully, we're going to get our team back here. Yeah. And and you know, ultimately, um, you, know, you can't prepare for injuries, um, but they do happen. And and so we've got to get healthy, um, but we've got to continue to take positive steps forward. 
All right, big week ahead. You know, yeah. Each week is big, and you look at the conference standings, everything's so tight. Yep. Four teams within a game of first place. You are one of those teams. So you got to find ways to get wins, mm -hmm. and it starts on Tuesday night against Missouri State. And again, this is different than the first game against Missouri State, as you'll be shorthanded. Yeah, no one's feeling sorry for <laughs> us. So we're just going to have to go out there and compete as hard as we can. Yeah, and, and obviously you got to find ways to get baskets. We've said that many, 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 many times. But it's a Missouri State team that maybe looks a little bit different because they appear to be playing better than when yeah. you faced them the first time. Yeah, they're mixing in a lot of man and zone. Uh, they're shooting the ball uh, with a lot more confidence, it looks like. And they're making shots. And, um, you know, they got good players. And I think, you know, you got a new coach, and uh, sometimes it takes some time to gel. But um, that's a really talented team, and they're playing really well. We'll get our first look at Evansville at the end of the week. Have you, have you looked at that much? Uh, right now I'm focused on Missouri State, but no, I mean, you can keep an eye on everyone in the league, and um, they're doing a great job. And they've got a new coach as well. Yeah, yeah, and they've got a great staff down there too, so. All right, good luck this week. Man. All right, thank you. For head coach Matt Loddick, I'm Todd Eichow. Thanks for watching us on Valpo Basketball Weekly.